Listen. So this movie's release had more twists and turns than Gerard Butler took Rush into shelter. At first, this apocalyptic flick wanted to be the summer highlight of the pandemic, only to then swerve over to talks about it going to Prime or HBO. Then it was like, psych, it's August. A actually, it's fall. Nope, it's a, a mystery. Then they learned about streaming and rolled it out in December 2020 to rent for 48 hours at $19.99 a pop, which, you know, if you're writing Gerard some PS I Love Yous, then sure. Personally, I'd say $19.99 to own is obviously way better, because if this was playing in Adobe Theater, I think it would have just cracked being a junior price for me because of the way that it's mixed. I think the visual effects are good enough, and, and while it's not a fantastic story, it is a decent family tale of survival that scratches that disaster movie itch. Let me explain. So the movie follows the Garrity family, who are living your typical American life in this big old house, with a really big emphasis throughout on how Gerard is just, you know, your average family man. John Garrity is a mortal human being. He represents us. And that's what I love about Jerry is Jerry has a, a vulnerability and a sensitivity to him as a, as a man that I think is part of our own masculinity. And he can bring that to the, um, to the table in a way where he's not afraid to show a character that is dealing with real flaws. He's a skyscraper architect who previously cheated on his wife, but before they can reconcile their problems, they have to deal with Comet Clark that's on its way down, and the news is covering all of this, the, the differences between asteroids and comets like their Mr. Herzog, talking about how one moves faster than the other as they're building up the anticipation, and yet, as we've seen in our own natural disasters, everyone's always going to be more focused on stocks falling over anything else. In other news, Wall Street's still Nathan, reeling come on. Latest job. Homework. Homework. Now, a big part of the movie is the idea of a nationwide lottery that chooses citizens by sending them a presidential alert to their phones. And since John Garrity has a job in structural engineering and the most boring name in America, him and his family get chosen and are notified in the middle of hosting the entire block. John, John Alan, Alan, Garrity. Garrity. No, no one else Now, obviously, Karens in the apocalypse and pre are going to demand you to make room for their kids. But like, personally, I, I would have just hopped in my car and tailed them. And now they've grounded all non-military flights. I mean, what do we do? I don't even know if this shelter relocation thing is, is real. He says while well, he has the Addy booted up on ways. Now, Butler's been in Geostorm, you know? The man has seen London fall literally in front of him, but this comet lands and just like that, part of Florida is gone. They've got citizens disappearing faster than the dinosaurs, and as they're looking for shelter, you realize that the real impact of this explosion, yeah, it would have just obliterated the Garrities into rarities. What's a chunk of rock? Rocks don't explode. <laughs> Yeah, tell that to the dinosaurs. Now, as this video gets closer to spoilers, they also do get closer to the shelters, which, according to them, are based off real life ones, as they confirmed. Do you know if bunkers like the ones featured in the movie actually exist? Yes. yes. There's even a whole doc on YouTube about how they created these shelters in Greenland way back in the day. So the movie is called Greenland because <laughs> that's where they're trying to get to. Well, the U.S. government have built quite a few nuclear bunkers there 40, 50 years ago that have been in disuse. And that's where these wristbands come in that hold their entire identity. The director even talked about the process of picking those people and who would qualify, stating that it all comes from the data the government has been collecting on us in order to see who's most worthy of being saved. So... Yeah, no wonder this movie got delayed. As they hustle to get into the bunkers in order to live, they forget the insulin that helps their kid live, which is perfect because, you know, I paid for another 90 minutes of this movie. That said, it does tie back into how the government, you know, qualifies you as worthy since in the film, they deem it an error that they even got the notification and they just decide to not count them because the ugly truth is equality is out the window during an apocalypse. An even uglier thing they could have covered in the movie is how many times in real life officials don't even bother to notify people and instead leave before the going gets tough, you know? We've seen tsunami reports where those responsible to give out warnings and provide shelter, they just dipped to our own government who has like their own group chat in case of emergencies and they don't want to notify us. So truth is, when things go south, you know they'll be on the first cruise to Cancun if they could. What they do cover though is how crazy citizens will go. The fabric of society just falls apart and Gerard finds himself in a den of thieves. And it's this part of the movie when the family is split, they used 
you see how drastically different both of these characters are written? John's a law-abiding citizen who's able to maneuver his way through all the chaos and even at one point meets King Bachu. Shout out to him for continuously moving up in these movies, but um, look, I, I think the man has had more dialogue in some vines than he did here, but... Hey, through all the barbarity, he's the one who helps Mr. Garrity. Meanwhile, everyone is looting, and somehow Allison and her kid are able to find insulin? Like, she needs a ride, so at a certain point, she just jumps into a stranger's car, and you're just staring at her like, ma'am. Everyone knows about these bracelets, and it's like a really big deal as all the chaos is going down, and Allison just decides to flash hers like, like ma'am, what are you doing? She just tells them all the personal info in the midst of all this chaos, and this How man's like, okay. When I say that this was the most infuriating scene in the entire movie, and it just ruins her character, look, I mean it. They have her do absolutely nothing to stop them from taking her kid, even when she has the advantage inside the car. They really had this lady running that six minute mile in the beginning for, for what? Like they just leave her standing in the highway longer than the kids from Good Boys. Bye. Now, the script comes from writer Chris Sparling, who previously did Buried, which I personally liked. And I know that the drama side of the disaster movie is what he really wanted to focus on, even saying he was inspired by 2012's The Impossible, which, yeah, that's a movie I'd recommend. That's a movie that knows how to hit you in the feels, especially in the second half, you know. But it's interesting to note that at one point, Neil Blomkamp was rumored to direct Greenland with uh, Chris Evans to star. And I do wonder how different it would have been if, if we would have had that crew instead. But director Rick Roman Wall does know how to deliver on the action, considering his back background as a stuntman, and as a director, he's kept his core crew from movie to movie, even having worked with Butler in the past, in the present, and are even set for the future with three more Has Fallen movies in the works. So while I wish the moral ambiguities and the drama, you know, hit a little bit more if the characters were more fleshed out, at least the Dolby mix and the bass made me feel something on my butt when the script couldn't with my heart. In the end, you know they reunite through a series of horizontal events, and by having good Samaritans like Holden, holding on and doing the opposite of what Family Man Garrity did in the beginning of the movie. How much do you weigh? Uh, 180, 185. Come on! 305, maybe 210. By the end, the title comes to fruition as they eventually do reach those Greenland arcs, and that's all thanks to John's superpower, which is his heart. And, you know, his ability to also not have to shave for nine months. But overall, I do find it to be a decent action flick that dabbles in the family drama. And I think can keep yours entertained for about two hours. And it just continues Butler's streak of serving up disaster flicks. With his necks shining the light on solar flares. And now he survives one of those two. In the meantime... Here's hoping you know a Gerard or Willis before we reach our Armageddon. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comment section. What do you thought about this movie or any others? I'm curious your thoughts on the 1999 rating. You know, we've had some discussions, especially over on the live streams, about <laughs> if that would even be considered a rented because it's like twice a ticket. But at the same time, you can watch it at home. But at the same time, I've seen people, you know, they can watch a movie in the comfort of their own home and they still would rather go to a theater and pay more. So I personally don't think the theater experience is going to go anywhere, especially with a movie like this. You know, not everybody... Some some people may have a really big TV at home, but you don't got that Dolby audio system because your neighbors would probably kick you out of the town. Uh, but other than that, I'm curious to know your thoughts, you know, some other recommendations if you're fans of these types of movies. You know, The Impossible was brought up by the writer, and that I would highly recommend that one. Um, the writer also had credited some inspiration to uh, Children of Men in A Quiet Place. Again, other really great movies better than this one, but I, I throw Japan Sinks into the mix. Uh, a Netflix adaptation uh, that I, I thought was pretty decent. I, I really like how they adapted the story to cover technology and whether you trust it or not during a crisis so there's that one as well but i'm curious to know any other picks that you may have um another thing to know uh, during the research that i was doing for greenland it's interesting to see that the previous president was gonna buy greenland i didn't even I didn't even know that was an option, but um, yeah, the more you know. Uh, other than that, I'm curious to know your thoughts on this, on any other movies, what you want to see us cover next. And until next time, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll save you a spot in our bunker.